Hotline Miami. Gorya Jail near Miami. Do you like hurting other people? Oh yes, as, as a matter of fact, I do. Oh well, that's good because we made an entire bloody game out of it. A whole two of them, in fact. Hotline Miami is a. It's a game about. It's a fascinating. I really like. I guess you could say why this game is. Can I put a banana in my? Hotline Miami is hard. Very hard. That's kind of the whole appeal of it. Well, apart from the gorgeously detailed pixel art aesthetic and the insanely over the top violence. Yeah, you're on fire. <laughs> you know you're in for a good time when the first thing you see when you boot up the game is a homeless man telling you how to kill people. I'm gonna tell you how to kill people. See, there you go. How nice of him. The basics of Hotline Miami are as simple as the premise. You use the WASD keys to rotate the motion of your two legs in the desired direction. Right click to pick things up and left click to use the thing you just picked up. You can even throw things at people. I don't know what kind of protein shakes Ryan Gosling over here has been drinking, but he could throw a plush doll at you and it'd knock you on your ass. That's not a joke, by the way. The protagonist appearance is blatantly inspired by Ryan Gosling from the hit movie Drive. The entire game is a fever dream. A literal fever dream. Jacket wakes up in a dingy bathroom where he's suddenly psychoanalyzed and bidden cryptic foreshadowing by a bunch of geezers wearing animal masks, where he then wakes up again, with the implication that the entire game thereafter is now a flashback. Jacket's apartment is actually quite cozy. At least it would be if it wasn't for the, uh, literal shit stains all over the floor. I see Jacket views bathroom hygiene in the same way a dog would. Toby! Hi, this is Tim at the bakery. The cookies that you ordered should be delivered by now. Oh, how sweet. Jacket's the kind of man to appreciate a good bit of bakery. How wholesome- Oh my god, Jacket, what are you doing? As per the start of each level, Jacket takes a voice message on his answer machine, giving him equally cryptic instructions and an address. These addresses all appear to be hideouts for the local Russian mafia, who all very politely took time out of their days to coordinate their dress codes to help them pop out of the environment. You know, just like in John Wick. Except with dress sense like that, they only deserve to get murdered. Kill everyone, leave, grab a pizza, refuse to elaborate. It speaks for itself, but yes, this game is insanely brutal, as a single swing from a bat can make guys' heads explode. Jacket is just as fragile as the Russians, however, meaning that just one hit will dob him in. And even though they're incredibly short and very simple, you will be replaying through these levels over and over again as you take things one step at a time, learning the enemy behaviors and map design more clearly with each subsequent death, until... Silence. Everyone is dead. The catharsis upon realizing you've cleared out the hideout is beyond words. To make matters even more morbidly fascinating, you will still have to flee the area, backtracking through the bloodbath you've just created. The blood and corpses of all the Russian mobsters sprayed everywhere. It's equally satisfying as it is eerie, as the ramifications of what just happened finally begin to set in as the adrenaline wears off. Then you go home and order a double pepperoni. This 555 deal's really popular. Given the high stress environment of being a sleeper agent hitman, Jacket unwinds after every massacre by popping off to the local corner shop, pizza parlor, VHS store, or even the pub, where the exact same geezer is working over the counter everywhere you go. My man lives in such abject poverty, he has to work four jobs just to keep himself afloat. Miami rent prices are no joke. But to touch on something far more exciting than working four day jobs at once, War Thunder. Do you like tanks? Do you like planes? Do you like big, big blooming, blooming battleships? Battle well, that's that's good then, because War Thunder has it all. Over 2,000 of them, in fact. Obsessively modeled down to each individual part in the most comprehensive mechanized war sim in human history. Where you can customize, decorate, and vandalize war vehicles of all shapes and sizes stretching back to over a hundred years of development. The best part? It's free. Free to play on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. For free, I was able to bedazzle myself with the insanely satisfying tank combat. Watching my guns tear chunks out of the enemy with the ridiculously satisfying vehicle x-rays. If you aren't playing War Thunder, you should be playing it now. Available on all platforms, new players and players returning from six months in activity may claim a large bonus care package, including multiple premium vehicles and a premium account, all for a limited amount of time. So don't dilly-dally. Download now through the link in the description and claim all this and more now, or you'll regret it. War Thunder. From here on out, the game is pretty formulaic. 
wake up, take phone call, kill everyone, order pizza, go home. Subtle things will begin to change throughout the game world, however, as you progress through the game, like the political flyers on Jacket's tables. Thank you for subscribing to our newsletter. We appreciate your interest in our cause. America is a tune. It must be sung together. Moreover, Jacket swiftly begins collecting newspapers and cutting out clippings reporting on the crimes he's committed. Yeah, that's not incriminating. To try and figure out the background of these attacks and why these specific establishments are being targeted. There's also the whole... Uh... I was a bit worried about you. The city streets don't seem so safe no more, you know? Nah, mate, what well, gave that away? Oh yeah, and Jacket has a girlfriend that he, uh liberates from a movie producer's compound. You can see their relationship evolve over time as Jacket begins attempting to hide the newspapers from her and she goes from sleeping on the couch to a bed in Jacket's room to them pushing the beds together. The environmental storytelling in Heartline Miami is an absolute masterstroke. There is so much communicated through the environment and the positioning of certain documents and items of interest that reveal so much about the game world and the progression of the story and the characters without a single line of dialogue. And when there is dialogue, it never spoils anything for you. It's layered in subtext and subtle clues about the lore that you'd otherwise miss if you're not paying attention. On the other hand, while a lot of things are otherwise implied, none of it is ever elaborated upon until the sequel. You're given just enough information to keep pressing forward, but never enough to get the full picture on what the hell's going on. Though this is obviously intentional since the entire charade is played from Jacket's perspective, and Jacket is nothing if not an unreliable narrator. Which is why things start to get a little, uh... <laughs> Yeah, as it turns out, Jackie is recollecting the event of the game from inside a hospital bed. His recollections becoming more and more schizophrenic as the event that landed him in the hospital draws closer. It's that or Jacket regularly has dead guys going through his fridge in the middle of the night. He's shot by a rat with a gun, wakes up in the hospital where he then wanders off to embark on a revenge mission that has literally nothing to do with the people that wronged him. No joke, Jacket unironically believes that the people leaving him messages on his phone instructing him to destroy the Russian mob is the Russian mob. Yeah, it's not the incredibly obvious ultranationalist terrorist organization with an extremely blatant political motive. It's the Russian Mafia, committing the most overly elaborate self-destruction possible. This is the only stealth segment in the game, by the way, featuring the worst enemy in the entire game. The splitting headaches this segment gives me from having to fight against its alcoholic control scheme. Think if you combine Solid Snake with Max Payne. Oh yeah, this game has a high score system. It's incredibly hard to not notice, to be honest with you. Achieving a high score in each level will award you with a new mask that grants you specific attributes or stat boosts. Some are way more useful than others. And honestly, none of them really change the gameplay in any significant fashion, and you can just as easily breeze through the entire game with the default Richard mask. Overall, Hotline Miami is a pretty banger game. It's short, very short, and given the brain-melting presentation of the story from Jacket's perspective, it's safe to say there's a lot more going on than meets the eye, and it's obvious to me that they had made Hotline Miami with the second game, or in mind. Hotline Miami 2. That's the wrong number! It's likely that Hotline Miami 2 is the textbook example of the perfect sequel, building upon the foundations laid out in the original and not only expanding upon it, but retroactively making the original better through the added story, context, and gameplay variety. Hotline Miami 2 is bigger, it is badder, it is harder. While bearing a larger story focus and exploring the background and consequences of Jacket's rampages, the game still refuses to spell anything out for the player, taking the Pulp Fiction approach to storytelling. By that, I mean told from multiple different perspectives out of chronological order. I hope you like lore, kids, because this game's lore is crap. Long story short, Hotline Miami takes place in an alternate history where the Soviet Union was actually competent. 1v1 to the US in a war over Hawaii, yeah, I'm sure that wouldn't be a logistics nightmare, before saying f*** it and dropping the bomb on San Francisco. For some reason, this is portrayed as a bad thing. The US and the Soviet Union put their differences aside because what's a nuke between friends? And formed the Russo-American Coalition which angers a few people, leading directly to the foundation of 50 Blessings, who send coded messages to ex-military personnel subscribed to their newsletters to conduct organized strikes against the Russian Mafia, whom apparently have some very pernicious connections to the motherland itself. TLDR, living in Miami, fucking sucks. It's a good thing half of this story has absolutely nothing to do with any of this, and is mostly just about a bunch of random geezers going on very loosely justified killing sprees, either directly influenced by 50 Blessings, or else trying to emulate Jacket in one form or another. Manny Pardo for example. Clearly watches way too many action movies. Cole Phelps by day, Max Payne by night. The city sure makes your skin thick, huh? I was born with thick skin. The only man who can stop the dreaded Miami mutilate- 
Oh. Each character has their own playstyle distinct to them, and given that the game constantly flits between each perspective with every level, there's always some new gimmick or a new take on the basic gameplay of Hotline Miami. And some of these characters even come with multiple different playstyles, which drastically change how they play. Obviously. Take Beard, for example. There are two options for Beard players, the Flamethrower and the Incorrect Ones. The Flamethrower is an absolute death machine, roasting all in its path instantly with a very generous ammo pool. Then you have literally anything else, which can barely even dispatch a goon with a feather as a weapon, and has literally no ammo whatsoever. Or what about Jake, who has a nail gun, or a pair of nunchucks. If we're all being honest with ourselves, however, all this pales in comparison to one man and one man only. Evan, the only non-lethal character in the entire game. This man, through the power of his manly mustache alone, busts through the front door of a Russian bathhouse, beats the snot out of everyone inside, disarming every weapon he comes across like some kind of savant army recruit, walks up to the Russian mafia boss and proceeds to casually ask him for an interview, only to make it home just in time for tea with the wife and kids. Truly the kind of man we should all aspire to be. What impresses me is that even though Hotline Miami is a series known for its difficulty, it still found time to slot in a hard difficulty, unlocked after completing the game. How it conducts said hard difficulty is quite interesting, in that it flips each level at a 180 degree angle and swaps around the enemy placements, reducing the stats of each weapon you pick up. Why I find this impressive, even if some of these supposed harder levels are in practice no harder or else easier than their normal counterparts, is that the flipping of the perspective and the change in enemy placements makes these hard stages feel like entirely new levels. That's not even mentioning the Steam Workshop or the infinite amount of custom levels available to download. And this wouldn't be a Hotline Miami video if I didn't talk about the soundtrack. Now while I can't exactly single out any specific tracks to put in this video since they're all copyrighted, it wouldn't be a Hotline Mammy video if I didn't at least give the soundtrack the credit it's due, because good lord it slaps hard. Although I imagine most of these tracks weren't produced with their respective levels in mind, they all complement each stage perfectly, establishing a unique tone and personality for each stage you burn through. Like with the differences between 1 and 2, the soundtracks in each respective game are quite different. Hotline Mammy 1's is way more simplistic, playing into its formulaic design, whereas there's a lot more going on in Hotline Mammy 2's soundscape, reflecting its more ambitious and vast development. And all in all, that's all I really have to say about Hotline Miami, a series that, in spite of its short length, wears its simplicity on its sleeve and revels in it, immensely satisfying from start to finish, boasting an absolute banger of a soundtrack and an absolute mind hump of a story. Without spoiling anything too significant about how everything plays out, just know that this game, in spite of its rampant wanton violence and destruction, knows exactly how to tug at your heartstrings. Where are you going then? Is it another job interview? I'm sure you'll get it this time. You're such a bright young man. They sure are missing out. Don't worry, you'll find something eventually. And just in case you forgot, War Thunder is free. It's good. It's fun. Links in the description. Care package for new players and returning players of six months in activity. Stop wasting time and go download it right this instant, young man. Now be a good boy and go play with all the big tanks. <laughs> Special shout out to the greatest patrons in the world. You are all true Americans. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, check out my weekend live streams scheduled for 7 p.m. BST on Saturdays and Sundays. Thank you all for watching, and as always, have a great day.